What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome to today's video where we are going to be looking at the most stacked position I have ever seen in a single draft class as we continue our 2019 draft prep and that is looking at the 2019 defensive line ranking. So I will be dividing these up uh, into defensive line and edge so if you're pretty much going to be pigeonholed as a you know, 3-4 outside linebacker or a 4-3 D end, for example, Nick Bosa, you're not going to see him on this list. This list here is more for uh, the 3-4 nose tackles, 3-4 defensive ends, 4-3 D tackles. You know, the big hogs. I'm going to pretty much, you just put like a weight threshold. As long as you're, if you're hovering around that 285, going on 290 outside of one player that's clearly still a defensive tackle on this list, uh, you're going to crack it. So this is the most depth to a position I have seen, even in the honorable mentions. We might see guys that if they have really good combines, they could contend for a first-round pick. There is legitimately 10 players that I think can go in the first round. Uh, obviously, they won't. There's no way in hell that a third of the first round is going to be defensive linemen. Uh, more importantly, D-tackles. But lots of talent here. Lots and lots of talent. And I think if you're a team that's desperate to get better anywhere on the defensive line, you're licking your chops and hoping you have a pick uh, in the first or second round. So before we jump into the top 10, we got to look at th four, four honorable mentions. And at one point, two of these guys were in my top 10. And then I was like, oh my God, I forgot this guy. I forgot about that guy. So first up, we have Terry Beckner Jr. from Missouri. This guy came out as one of the big, biggest, biggest, biggest high school recruits. I remember in quite some time. I remember I was like uh, making my NCAA 14 rosters. And I was like, man, look at this Beckner guy. He's a monster. Uh, I think he probably will be second, third round pick. We have Isaiah Bugs from Alabama. He's like nine tackles for loss, six or seven sacks on the year. Uh, he was pretty much like a 10B kind of scenario. Uh, but there's just so much talent on that Alabama defensive line and so much talent within this top 10, he couldn't crack the list. We have Jared Willis the third, Florida Gator transfer, doing big things for Miami this year. And we have Yuhana Guyfan from Wyoming. This guy's really, really good. Not as productive this year as he was last year, but still all four of those guys I think will be gone between the second and third rounds, most likely in the second round. Uh, but then again, then again, as we're talking it out here, because there's so much depth, maybe it's one of those things where those guys, unfortunately, will slip because there's so much other guys within this top 10 that could potentially drop a little bit into that second round. Beckner, Bugs, Willis, and Guy Fan could be available, you know, third round, fourth round, something like that, late day two, early day three, which would be utterly ridiculous, as if this was any other year, I almost guarantee those four guys would be in our top 10. So without further ado, jumping in at number 10, we have Christian Wilkins, 6'3", 310 pounds out of Clemson. So far this season, he has 25 tackles, 6 tackles for loss, and 2 sacks, while well, this Clemson defensive line. As everyone that isn't an Alabama fan hopes that if that happens in the college football playoffs, this Clemson team can challenge Alabama. A big reason why they'll be able to do that is their defensive front seven just in general even their back end's not bad they got Trayvon Mullen Isaiah Simmons but Christian Wilkins I actually kind of been a little bit underwhelmed with him this year I thought maybe two years ago he was really really good last year I thought for sure he'd declare uh maybe not as bad as Bryce Love where's Bryce Love the running back for Stanford returned where he really hurt his draft stock I don't think Christian Wilkins has done that that much but where I think if he came out last year he would have been a first round pick this year there's a chance, just because there's that many guys ahead of him, he could slip into the second round, and it could cost him a little bit of money. I don't know what Dabo Sweeney had on him to get him to return to school. Dabo got a couple guys. To, I think Austin Bryant was another one on the defensive line. He was just almost an honorable mention. Um, but Wilkins is not bad at all. Like I said, any other year, he'd probably be top five in my rankings. And I think that, uh, yeah, he'll probably at this point be a early day two pick. Going to number nine, we have Draymond Jones, six foot three, two hundred and seventy-five pounds, out of Ohio State. So far this season, twenty-three tackles, nine tackles are lost, five and a half sacks. Now this guy here is the smallest player on this list. Could he play um, three-four D end? Could he play four-three D end? I mean, he's really good. He's really. I don't want to say he's one-dimensional because he's not a liability against the run, but he, obviously you can tell by his stats. And if you watch Ohio State play, he is their uh, big-time pass rusher, especially when Nick Bosa has been out. Uh, but I do think he will be a D-tackle. I think he'll be a 4-3 defensive tackle. And uh, just whew, good luck. Good luck. Like, he plays like Aaron Donald kind of plays. We're like, you know, you're clearly a D-tackle. Traditionally, defensive tackles are, uh, you know, stay at home, more so affect the run than they do the pass. It's, you know, they, they're the guys that make the outside edge rushers get their job done. I think a guy like Draymond Jones brings that rare skill set that uh, he, can, he can affect the pass. He can get some sacks from the interior of that defensive line. Or if you want to use him as a 4-3, or sorry, a 3-4 end, he could probably get that job done there as well. I'm just not so sure right now where I am. It's his setting an edge. 
I think he's better inside and beating up on some centers and some guards. Still, Draymond Jones, I've seen many lists have him go as a top 15, top 20 pick. Number nine on my list. Still agree with that. It's just it's just how it happened. Over to number eight, we have Jeffrey Simmons, six foot four, three hundred pounds, out of Mississippi State. So far this season, he has thirty nine tackles, ten and a half tackles for loss, no sacks. Uh, the reason why I have him here, I, I don't really take off field into consideration. I don't really take where they're going to go uh, in the draft into consideration, but because I obviously Simmons probably will go higher than a couple of these guys that may be nose tackles. That's how they're viewed. Uh, he does have some off the field. I just have not been overly impressed in the games, more so than some of the guys that I ranked higher than him. Uh, still legitimate first round prospect. Still, I would not be shocked if he went in that 10 to 20 range, somewhere in there. But just maybe it's it's the fact that I haven't watched all of his games, and it's I think three of the Mississippi State games I've watched over the last two years. He's been all he's been good. He hasn't been amazing. I haven't he hasn't been breathtaking like I've read about some of these scouting reports. I was like, I'm just not seeing it right now. I know he has the off the field, but if he can put it all together, could be the best Mississippi State defensive lineman to come out since ya boy Fletcher Cox. Going to number seven, we have Jerry Tillery, six foot six, three hundred five pounds, out of Notre Dame. So far this season, he has twenty four tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, and six sacks. I wanted to put him higher. If if we're going by where, like my sleeper out of all these players, are there is there any sleepers? Because they're all legitimate talents. It would be Jerry Tillery to be you know, where I have him at seven. I think he has the potential to maybe be the best of this group. Just for right now, I think where he is as. Um, as a complete defensive tackle, not so sure. Again, uh, kind of like a Draymond Jones. Not a liability against the run, but he's not really, really well-rounded like some of the other guys at the top of this list that can do it all. And that's why I have him here. But I do think he has some of the most upside out of everyone in this draft class at the defensive tackle spot. And he's only getting better, man. And he's had some monster games this year for Notre Dame. A big reason why Notre Dame is where they're at this season. I do remember he had a couple instances... I mean, it was two years ago, or a year ago. He, like he stomped on someone, put a little mini Dadamik and Sue. Uh, maybe there's something that can get in uh, on a scouting report when you're doing a deep dive that you know, like, oh, maybe he is a little bit of an asshole or has a little bit of a mean streak to him. And the downsides, maybe he could be uh, short fuse and stuff like that. I don't really know. I haven't seen. It. I just know he had an instance. Either way, Jerry Tillery coming in at number seven again, legitimate first round talent. Go number six. We have Derek Brown, six foot five, three hundred and twenty five pounds from Auburn. So far this season, 31 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. With that size, kind of built like a nose tackle, brings you that versatility. Uh, reports say that he will be surprising at the combine. I seen, uh, I think it was like a Walter Football said that he can run a sub 540 at almost 330 pounds is unheard of. That's like Don Terry Poe numbers for God's sakes. Um, again, good against the run. Like that's where number six way down. These are like almost interchangeable. I really feel like six to four. It could switch on any given moment. I don't necessarily know if teams are going to kind of view these guys as nose tackles. And nose tackles just get undervalued in the draft. I don't know really why it is. It's just, you know, when you can only affect the run. Or you're viewed up, uh, viewed as only a guy that can affect the run. Uh, that's where guys like Jerry Tillery, Jeffrey Simmons, Draymond Jones could go ahead because they can get after the quarterback. Because it's a passing league nowadays. But I think Derek Brown, don't get fooled by that size. You see guys 330, kind of figure like, oh, he's a space eater. This guy here can get after the quarterback. And if he tests very, very well at the combine could finish much higher than number six in my rankings and uh, again another guy could go top 10 wouldn't be surprised going to number five it's gonna be dexter lawrence six foot five 345 pounds from clemson uh, probably the worst stats of the group so far this season 17 tackles he has one tackle for loss and no sacks this guy here is a freak of nature. He's almost 350 pounds. There's some reports that he could run a sub 540. I mean, does 40 yard dash really matter a whole lot for defensive tackles? Eh, not really. But when you see a guy that's 350 pounds that's that fast, that athletic, you're going to just say, I want to tap into that upside. And Dexter Lawrence, uh, along with Christian Wilkins, and you got Austin Bryant and Cleland Farrell, make up a very, very talented Clemson defensive line. I think where Dexter Lawrence probably is the best of the bunch, most consistent, uh, would be a great fit for as a nose tackle in a 3 4 team. And he's one of those, like a. Like a 2.0 nose tackle. Nose tackle is usually, again, like a Vince Wilford, a guy that just stops the run. He's that new, that next step, a guy that can do that against the run as well as affect the pass. I think Dexter Lawrence has legitimate top 15 talent. Going to number four, it's going to be Raekwon Davis, 6'6", 315 pounds out of Alabama. So far this season, he has 27 tackles, three tackles for loss, and a half a sack. Again, uh, you know, I kind of thought 
coming in, he was going to be the best Alabama defensive lineman. Not the case. We'll, we'll see that in just a little bit. But Raekwon Davis, when I watched him in just pretty much both of Alabama's college football playoff games last year, he was the best player I saw on that defense. And we saw Deron Payne go very, very high. We saw, um, I don't know who else went, you know, Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, I'm just dropping. There's probably some other people that I just can't think of off the top of my head that went fairly high. And I was like, this Raekwon Davis guy is the best. He's like sick. Uh, he was being billed at 6'7". This guy was ripped. He's outstanding against the run. Not, you know, phenomenal against the pass. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you want a guy with upside. You want a guy with traits. You want a guy with intangibles. You want a guy, obviously, Alabama is a little bit added bonus because you know he's coming from uh, a, a good program with, you know, a lot of success. In their, in their talent transitioning to the National Football League. So I think A. Raycon Davis has everything going for him. I think, again, very much like Dexter Lawrence, top 15 talent. And uh, as long as he can continue, maybe develop a better uh, pass rushing attack in terms of his moves, getting off blocks, uh, the sky's the limit for Raekwon Davis. Very high ceiling. Going to number three is going to be Rashawn Gary, 6'5", 290 pounds, out of Michigan. So far this season, he has 18 tackles, 3.5 tackles for loss, and 2 sacks. Very surprised that I didn't have Rashawn Gary as my number two, but when I was looking at the tape, I mean, there, there's there's a newcomer to the block that very much needs to be higher than Rashawn Gary right now. Uh, but again, maybe going for Rashawn Gary is his body of work. He's been consistently one of the best defensive linemen in college for like three years now, including this year, uh, versus some other guys that we'll talk about that might only be a one-year wonder but i like Rashawn gary man i like his versatility i like the fact that he clearly i think could seamlessly play as a 4-3d tackle or a 3-4 defensive end he brings just a good pass rushing move he's a great athlete uh very smart player i remember i watched the all or nothing with michigan he was like one of the like the all he's one of the nerd alerts on the team as well which is good i mean anytime you want to invest a high draft pick you don't want the guy that's like the party animal you like the guy that's kind of like the the bookworm a little bit uh, but I mean, that's we're not really gonna talk about that because that's, that's more of like a NFL scouting. Like, oh, what's his personality like? Nah, whatever. But uh, Rashawn Gary is very, very good. I was like I said, the only thing that's surprising about Rashawn Gary at three for me is that he's not number two. But uh, the going on body of work this year, Rashawn Gary. I mean, he does does get double teamed a lot. He's still a very big member of that Michigan defense that's been outstanding this season and a big reason why Michigan might have a chance to get into that college football playoff. Uh, but I, I do think that Rashawn Gary has faced a lot of double teams and hasn't done as well as he did last year. I don't know what it was last year, but he was just seemingly unblockable versus this year struggling just a little bit, but still is a very, very elite talent that I think has a chance to go in the top 10 and probably should go in that top 10. Going to number two, it's the newcomer of the block, Quinnen Williams, six foot four, two hundred ninety pounds, out of Alabama. So far this season, thirty three tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. This guy was incredible against LSU. I heard about him. There was rumblings that he's a legitimate first round talent, like really, really early on in the college football season. I was like, yeah, you know, I've seen him a little bit, uh, but more so looking at Raekwon Davis. I've, I've seen, I heard a little bit more about this Bugs guy. Quinnen Williams is a freak of nature. He literally has, like, some of the – if we're going in Madden turns, he's, like, some of the best finesse move I've ever seen. His block shit is ridiculous. He's a great athlete. I'm going to be very interested to see how well he does test at the Combine. Uh, if he blows the, the brakes off the Combine, it's unlikely, but there's a chance I can make him number one on this list. Uh, very, very dominant. The best player, I think, on that Alabama defense, Deontay Thompson, the safety. Another guy kind of coming out of nowhere is very, very good. But I think Quillian Williams right now is the face of the best team in college football. And this Alabama team is probably the best Alabama team I've seen since I've started watching college. And when you're the best in the face of the best defense I've ever seen, oof, that's, that's, that's high praise. That's high praise for Quinn and Williams. And uh, I think right now, guy might have a chance going within the top five. It's tough to say. We don't know the final draft order, what needs are going to be where. But in terms of a talent standpoint, I think Quinn and Williams is very much pushing for that top five player in this draft based upon true talent. And at number one, no surprise, it's Ed Oliver, 6'2", 295 pounds, out of Houston. So far this season, he has 51 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. He's been the best defensive player, I think, in college the last two years. Maybe even the last three, I think that's a that's a push. Maybe we're judging in terms of just talent alone. There's a, there's a legitimate claim. Ed Oliver's a freak of nature. I've seen him run. He's basically at almost 300 pounds. He's athletic as, like, a really athletic linebacker. He has footwork like a DB. And he's just relentless in the edge rush. Yeah, quality competition could come up because he is playing for Houston. But I feel like that, while that's true, Houston doesn't just play a bunch of pushovers. And teams are like triple teaming him. And he's still making plays. And, you know, it's, it's really tough with defensive linemen, like I said, because you can get double teamed. It might not always reflect your true talent in the box score because you're getting double and triple teamed. So when you make big plays, um, you know, it, it's that much more important. And Ed Oliver and the big play 
is nothing short of uh, a familiarity at this point. They are they go together like peanut butter and jelly, and it's very easy for me to say right now, even with the emergence of Quinn Williams, Ed Oliver is my number one defensive lineman, and I don't think that's going to change. And I hope he does run everything at the combine because I think he's going to put up some pretty freaky numbers. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 defensive line rankings at the midway point-ish of the college football season. Did I miss anyone? Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with my list. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. And make sure you tune into Pink Slips tonight live on my Twitch.